Okay, so now we're going to just start refining the lower leg. And we're going to do the upper leg part first. So again, I found this in our picture of just some kind of machinery. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just that I found an interesting shape, something that I thought looked kind of cool, and I felt could fit the form, and I just kind of picked it. So again, going in, using our curves to edit down and get rid of some of the contrast, and then desaturate just to kind of get us on a consistent level. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually just coming in and kind of deleting out the sections I don't need, and I'm just going to use the polygon lasso tool just to be able to get a better kind of just faster kind of selection quickly. I'm going to clean out some of these like little areas where there's some backgrounds so we can get some nice little see-through areas. And again, I'm just going to use some of the perspective tools to kind of form and fit this to kind of make it look like it it belongs in this kind of area on its body. So, I'm using the warp tools, perspective tools. Never be afraid to warp or edit your stuff even if you hand draw it. Don't be afraid to edit it and get it to be the right kind of contour. That's why we get to use these programs. So you can see the lighting's pretty bad off. It's not right. So I gotta do a little bit of work and get in here and start editing this so that it's actually the proper lighting. And that's part of it just with concept painting and stuff like this. I'm just kinda using the underpainting and the you know the photo source as a way to give me a baseline. Something to give me an interesting shape very quickly that it might be you know, I could get these shapes, but it could take me, you know, days instead of minutes to kind of figure out something interesting. So, just painting out some of the details and trying to work on how this will look overall. Leaving some details in, possibly. Don't be afraid to do that and just kind of paint around them. You never know if you want it later, so I just kind of like leave them there for now. Maybe I'll just give them kind of a 50% paint over just to kind of make you not pay attention to it. Here again, just painting it some highlight surface. So this surface is kind of facing where our light source would be. So I'm just kind of coming in and blocking in some solid color just to give it a little bit of proper information. And again, this cylinder, it was kind of flat, it was reading kind of flat, so I'm coming in and just kind of adding a little bit of a highlight to it. Just with a standard paintbrush, nothing, nothing too fancy. And I'm coming in and give it a little bit of a shadow too. Just wanted to leave a little bit more contrast. It was reading really flat. So it was all reading like it was on one plane. And coming in and kind of using darks and lights, we can kind of pop the form and make it feel a lot more three-dimensional with very little effort. So I'm just kind of coming in here and touching up some little pieces to try to just make it read better, make it feel more three-dimensional. So cleaning up some of these lines. And don't be afraid at any point you just feel like you need to add some more details or it just isn't working for you. You can always paint extra stuff that isn't there. It's not really a big deal. We're just using the photo stuff to kind of get us to a baseline, just to get some interesting shapes in there and little details that we might not have thought about on our own. So I'm just refining them, cleaning up, just trying to give it a little bit cleaner of a silhouette. And I'm just coloring this a little bit more accurately. So that was reading pretty harsh, so I'm just coming with a little bit of a softer brush, paint it in on a different layer, and then just paint out where the straps are. Give a little bit of a smoother transition. And then come back and kind of paint it a little bit of a highlight. Just to look like there's some light catching on those edge of those bands, instead of them just reading as kind of really super thin paper kind of laying across there. And I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit. You can see a lot of this is actually hidden behind the arm. So I'm not too worried about the way it looks. But we will make sure it's pretty clean and a lot of the silhouette and stuff reads right. So I'm just coming in here. Last minute little tweaks. Seeing what we can take care of. Paint back in some of the stuff I accidentally erased. Always trying to think about just kind of how this is. I, I kind of like this piece because it kind of felt like a little interesting kneecap. You know, it's pretty thick and heavy. And, you know, cut it in a little bit on the one side just to give it a little more of an interest. So, maybe when he crouches, it gives him some protection in that important joint. And that might be not a shape that I thought about if I wouldn't have used reference. So, something to think about when you're designing anything mechanical. Is don't be afraid to use pictures. And it's every professional concept artist is pulling for images to overlay or add to and append his designs. So... Don't be afraid of it, and especially in production art. Don't just straight steal a design, but tweak it. You know, change things. You know, 
we're coming in, we're editing out some stuff, we're adjusting some of the edge lines. You know, this was a piece from a, a backhoe. You know, again, I'm just deleting now. I'm deleting out a lot of that, uh, erasing it, that silhouette that I originally drawn. This is close, very close to what I had, but you know, this obviously has a more interesting silhouette in the long run. So we're just gonna go with that. You know, that original black silhouette that we drew, it's not necessarily 100%, you know, what we have to stick with. It's usually just a good guide. So in the next video here, what we'll do is we'll actually just work on the lower leg.